I don't have a ton for you today because I feel as awful as I sound, but I'm going to do my best. Um, you know, it's interesting when we get to this point in Lent. I think a lot of times we can feel kind of run down. Uh, we can feel kind of disappointed in ourselves because maybe we haven't been living up to the penances quite as well as we thought we would from the get-go. At least I know that's usually the way that I am. Or, you know, just we've kind of gotten into our routine again. It's been almost a month since Ash Wednesday. We're kind of back into things. But what I would say is this Sunday, this Latari Sunday, you know, when we get this speck of color in the midst of, you know, the purple Sundays of Lent, that we get this incredibly famous gospel from John. I mean, that line, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, might have eternal life. And I would just say at this point in the liturgical year, at this point in Lent, it's just as though the church is saying to us, hey, remember, this isn't all on your shoulders. Like just because maybe you haven't had like the best Lent ever so far, maybe, you know, you haven't like entered into it as well as you had hoped. The thing to remember at this point is our faith is amazing. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that even hearing from St. Paul, you know, that it's not that our Lord wants us to earn our way in, that, you know, he gives us grace. It's not from work so that no one may boast. And I know there's the whole sort of like dynamic, like, oh, but you Catholics, you do all these works. But the fact of the matter is, when we love, right, We want to do things. We want to be involved. And I would just say that even if the fasting hasn't gone so well, even if you haven't given many alms yet, to spend time with our Lord, to reflect on the very fact of what he's talking about, about just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. I mean, herein lies the mystery of our salvation that we come from a long line of sinners, as we heard in the first reading, that the people added infidelity to infidelity. You get the Babylonians, you get the King Cyrus of Persia, right? These different ruling folks that deal with the Israelites differently. But the thing is, our life is not about whatever current political class is in control. What is our life about? The fact that our Lord loves us so much to enter into all of this with us. And I would just say at this point in Lent, over halfway through, it's good to listen to the words that the church called us back together this morning with the opening prayer. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. And there it is. I would just say to recognize the fact that what we're preparing to celebrate, those solemn celebrations, I mean, it's something far better than we could have ever made up for ourselves, right? That God loves us so much to be in all of this with us, that he wants to be a part of every single aspect of our life, that he wants to shine his light in those places where we find ourselves in darkness. So I just say at this point, let's pray for the grace to really appreciate where we are, to appreciate the fact that our Lord is truly with us, and to thank God for the fact that we still have two and a half weeks before we enter into those solemn celebrations, and to have the grace to truly enter into them with strong devotion and eager faith. Praise be Jesus Christ.